Hi, this is Brian from Worldwide Stereo, coming to you from our showroom in Montgomeryville, PA, to talk to you about JVC's third generation laser projector, the DLA NZ9. This is the flagship model for their brand new NZ series, which includes a lineup of 8K, 3D ILA chip, single laser, home theater, and gaming projectors, all of which feature dual 48 gigabit HDMI 2.1, HDCP 2.3 inputs to handle the next generation of UHD content and a low latency mode to enhance your gaming experience. I'll get a little nerdy about the NZ9 and I'll be providing a comparison overview with the NZ8 and the NZ7, so stay tuned. JVC was established in Yokohama, Japan in 1927. They have a rich history of innovations and firsts, like the world's first VHS format video recorder. Currently, JVC Pro HD cameras and professional monitors are used at broadcast and TV facilities. JVC projectors have also been the top choice in cockpit and control tower simulators for training commercial airlines or fighter pilots for the US military. There's no better scenario for realism and fast response than those. JVC has designed for the professional and consumer worlds and has stayed on top of what crucial features are needed for success. The JVC NZ series projectors are feature rich, versatile, capable, and the finest laser projectors on the market. They are prepared to fit in any level theater. In this video, we're going to examine the tech specs, what they mean, and I will be talking about why you want to pick a JVC projector like this NZ9 for your premium home theater. Also, if you looked into the DLA NZ9 versus the DLA RS4100 from JVC and thought their specs and price were too similar, it's because they share the same infrastructure and parts with slight cosmetic differences externally. Uh, other than that, they're the same. The NZ9 here comes with a lens cover, a remote control, two AAA batteries, a power cord, a user manual on CD, and a very helpful quick start guide. Another thing that is included, but not in the box, is the NZ9 has a three year parts and labor warranty. And the first year, JVC offers advanced replacements while you're experiencing any issues. That's a premium benefit that comes with a premium product. Even if it's not used, it's great to know that JVC will be there for you. The NZ9 is a big projector. Its dimensions are 19 11 16 wide, 9 and 7 30 seconds high, and 20 and 13 16 deep. It also weighs 55.7 pounds. The NZ7 and the NZ8 are no slouch either. They share the same chassis size and measure in at 19 and 11 16 wide, 9 and 7 32 high, and 19 and 29 30 seconds deep, and are 49.5 and 50.8 pounds respectively. They're big too. So big that most standard universal brackets can't handle its weight or mounting pattern, which is 337 millimeters by 290 millimeters. So you must get a beefier bracket to hang it properly. When mounting, a helpful hint is that the feet are removed to expose the mounting holes and you'll need an M5 screw to connect it. Please keep that in mind when you're looking into hanging in your theater. Safety first, use all the right hardware. You only want it to seem like everything is falling around you in a movie. Not actually. As we're talking about how it's installed, the NZ9 has an 18 element, 16 group, 100 millimeter, all glass lens assembled in a full aluminum barrel, which is an improvement from the NZ8 and the NZ7, which only have a 65 millimeter lens. This means there are 16 high quality glass lenses that make up the assembly. And since they're all glass, they can give you the highest resolution to every corner of the screen, which is where you'll notice lesser materials struggle. So five of those lenses are used specifically to accommodate the different refractive index of the red, green, and blue color gamut. It also has a motorized zoom and focus. So those adjustments can be done with a remote without having to make physical adjustments on the projector. Let's look at the NZ9 and the connections available for your theater. On the front and the back, you'll find the IR receiver for the remote. This is especially handy so you don't have to worry about the projector placement for fire IR commands at the unit. Or if you're an integrator like us, you can put the IR flash on the rear of the unit so it's more conspicuous. The NZ9 has two 48 gigabit per second, HDCP 2.3, HDMI 2.1 inputs. One RS-232 input to connect to an automation system to get the highest level of control. One USB for service and upgrades. One RJ45 for network. One 8 inch 12 volt 100 milliamp trigger output to help drop down a screen for a mixed use room, and one 3D synchro to connect to an optional 3D emitter. 
one of the few projectors that still does 3D. Also on the back, you'll see the simple manual buttons to adjust the projector if you can't find the remote. There's also a filter on the back close to the inputs. JVC made the filter accessible so it's easy to clean regularly to extend the quality of your projector. Dirt can reduce brightness and cause shadows in the image, so a simple cleaning will maximize your enjoyment. The remote has your standard on, standby, and input buttons. It also has more specialized control of the lens, picture modes, color profiles, and gamma settings, so you can tweak the NZ series to your heart's content. These are the buttons you'll need to access a lot of the features I'll be talking about soon. There's also a nice hide button that will disable the image without turning off the projector, which is helpful in doing side-by-side -side comparisons or presentations. Something I like to use in our showrooms so I'm not blinded by the light. The NZ9 has a 1.35 to 1 to 2.7 to 1 throw ratio. If you want to go to the maximum 16 by 9 screen size of 280 inches diagonal, it will need to be between 28 to 56 feet back. That's a giant room but with the light output of this projector and has more than enough power behind it. The NZ9 is also versatile with the placement with a 100% vertical lens shift and a 43% horizontal lens shift. Where the NZ8 and the NZ7, they share the 80% and 34% respectively. As much as we love to put the projector in the perfect position, which is dead center on your screen, most installations, this is not a practical or viable solution. With the NZ9's vertical lens shift, you can go half the screen height above the screen when it's perfectly centered to your viewing screen. Now, it's important to understand that as you move more vertically, you start to lose your horizontal lens shift and vice versa. Luckily, there's a chart in the manual that will show you the curve that you will have to work with so you can do the math and determine if you're using 80% lens shift. Vertically, you'll have about 15% horizontal shift remaining. Let's look at what comprises the biggest differences in the series and why you want to step up in a model and what you'll get. The NZ series has three 4K direct image light amplification chips, which are JVC's liquid crystal and silicone, or LCOS, and they're the third generation single blue essence laser. As JVC manufactures their own DILA chips, they test them for their quality and capability. The higher rated chips end up in the higher level projectors. The NZ9 gets the top 1% produced. The NZ8 gets the top 10%. The NZ7 get the rest that meet their high standards. So as you move up in the lineup, JVC has set aside the best chips for the highest end. The JVC proprietary 8K E-Shift X technology with four direction shift reproduces 8K quality images. The NZ9 and the NZ8 can make each of the over 35 million pixels addressable compared to other E-Shift technologies that only half the pixels are addressable. As JVC has three native 4K chips, it uses the E-Shift X technology to reproduce the 8K input source and quality. Another jump up from the NZ7 to the NZ8 and NZ9 is the addition of the cinema filter for the light engine that gives them the full DCI P3 color gamut. The NZ7 starts the series with 2200 lumens and a native contrast of 40,000 to 1. And because of all the upgrades I've already discussed, better or bigger lenses, the cinema filter, the highest quality DILA chips, the native contrast gets better and better. The NZ8 pushes to 2,500 lumens and doubles the native contrast to 80,000 to 1. And the NZ9 pulls out ahead with 3,000 lumens and jumps to 100,000 to 1 native contrast. And this is the native contrast measurement. Native contrast is measuring the output with black and white as a checkerboard pattern on the screen to see the difference between the measurement of the black and the white at the same time to determine what the ratio of brightness to darkness is. It is primed for the next generation of gaming consoles and immersive cinema experiences, handling up to 8K 60p and 4K 120p signals and everything in between. It handles the highest resolutions while offering low latency mode down to an estimated three to six frames to reduce your latency for traditional gaming consoles and your high powered gamer PCs. Trust me, Donkey Kong looks amazing on this thing. Just make sure you're using an HDMI 2.1 cable so you have the speed you need for maximum resolution. Your cable has to be rated for 48 gigabits per second, otherwise you'll be losing out. Picture modes will include standard dynamic range, SDR, and high dynamic range, HDR. With HDR, it's capable of the following video formats, HDR10+, HDR10 with standard HDR10, frame adaptive HDR, or Panasonic's exclusive HDR optimizer, and HLG. Let me touch on the HDR10 Plus a little bit because it is an important feature of the NZ8 and the NZ9. 
HDR10 Plus is a dynamic format and is being used on more and more Ultra HD discs, as well as by streaming services like Amazon Prime Video, Paramount Plus, Hulu, and more. HDR10 Plus increases its candela per square meter or nit from a range of 300 to 1000 nits to a solid 1000 nits, and the color depth increases from 10 bit to 12 bit. At this point, you're either at right on or what does that mean? If you're at what does this mean, it means that HDR10 Plus allows for higher brightness and color depth than standard HDR10. And because it uses dynamic metadata, it also is able to utilize tone mapping to optimize the display and faithfully reproduce the images as it's intended to be viewed. JVC also has recommended sizes and distances depending on the HDR10 Plus level you want. For the highest level, they suggest a screen of the size of 116 inches diagonal and a projection distance of 143 inches. Simply put, you'll see an amazingly deep color in the picture and the NZ9 will enhance details in areas that normally get washed out or lost in other projectors. A new first for JVC is that the NZ series also has their theater optimizer that can fine tune the HDR. By knowing the diagonal screen size, screen gain, and screen type, what aspect ratio you have, the NZ9 and the NZ8 will adjust itself based on these values to fine tune your image scene by scene so images aren't too dark one moment and too bright the next. It is constantly shifting to create the most precise reproduction of the original content. This option is not available on the NZ7 and for the NZ8 and the NZ9, it will not appear on SDR content and can only be configured if the picture mode is set to frame adaptive HDR. I had the opportunity to experience the NZ series firsthand when JVC visited our showroom. We tested out JVC's HDR Theater Optimizer and HDR10 Plus in real life and compared it to another projection setup. We put on the Jason Statham classic, The Meg. We watched a scene where the divers descended into the ocean and the cameras aimed up from below. On the HDR projection setup we compared it to, all you could really see was the glow of the sun from above the water. But the NZ series showed the lost detail of the divers in the middle where you would have seen it in the theatrical release, but you could have missed it at home. The NZ series also has a variety of color profiles to select from. On the remote, you'll have access to adjust and change these to take control of your experience and adjust the color profile to match what you're watching. The profiles available are BT.709, BT.2020, which if HDR10 Plus is selected, it is fixed at DCI, video for live footage or dramas, anime for animated works with bright colors, cinema to balance brightness and color vividness, film one for characteristics close to Eastman Kodak company movies, film two if you're looking for Fujifilm Corporation movies, Pana PQ HL or Pana PQ BL to utilize the high luminance or basic luminance of a Panasonic UHD player and up to four custom profiles if you were ISF calibrating your projector. JVC really wants you to make the most out of your experience. If you're getting that deep into it that you know you're watching an Eastman Kodak Company movie and you want a setting for it, JVC has you covered. If you don't know and you want to let NZ Series take the wheel, just set it to auto and it will decide for you based on the input content. And if you're really interested in all of this data and information, get to the info screen in the menu and we'll show you your colorometry, HDR, and max CLL content light level and max FALL frame average light level. An important note, when you're done setting up everything in your projector, I suggest recording all the settings that you made. This is helpful for newer electronics that receive firmware upgrades from feature improvements and bug fixes. Sometimes these firmware upgrades can erase your hard work and you don't wanna start from scratch. On paper and sitting in front of me, this is a beast of a projector. I'm not just talking about its size, but also its capability. The NZ series projectors are the solution for your at-home cinema experience. As you move up through the line, you'll get a fuller and richer theatrical experience without having to leave the house. If you're on the fence about why to step up between models, I hope I answered your questions and gave you the good reasons to go bigger. If there was anything I missed, please fire off a comment below and we can chat about it. And come on, it's got freaking laser beams which means you won't have to change a bulb. It's rated for 20,000 hours until it's half-life, longer if you adjust the light engine output, which means you can watch the extended edition of The Lord of the Rings a thousand times. 
This is JVC's third generation blue laser projector, which means they've learned a thing or two from the previous models and have listened to you, the consumer, and adjusted and improved to match your needs now and in the future. Also, patience is key when it comes time to calibrate the NZ series. JVC is recommending 400 hours of use before you fine tune it to your room and do an ISF calibration. Overall, the NZ9 will bring home the cinematic experience you deserve, while faithfully replicating the depth and brilliance of color that HDR is providing to the highest quality. Your home will be the best theater in town, so I hope you're charging for admission. Thank you for joining me for our first look and series overview of the JVC DLA NZ9 projector. You can learn more about this online at WorldWideStereo.com, or if you're in the area, you can stop by our showrooms in Ardmore or Montgomeryville, PA. We offer 60-day returns, free shipping on all orders, and we're authorized dealers for everything we sell. If you have any feedback or questions, leave them in the comment section below, or you can call or email us at any time. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. This is Brian for WorldWide Stereo. I'll see you next time.